So welcome everybody to what we like to call us the M&M show, Mike and Murph um, experience, where we get a chance to sit down and talk to some of our uh, friends that became, well, you know, family, I like to call you family because, um, you know, it, it's one of those things where, you know, you get to meet people and they get to be so cool and like so down to earth that you become family, not just artists. So what we plan on doing, Mike and I, is to get together with a lot of the artists or as many artists as we can that have performed um, during the concerts that uh, we were given, that excitement uh, worldwide concerts and events were given. And we got a chance to sit down with you and um, welcome. You know, we got Ursula in the house. We got, let me introduce Mike, Michael Jacobs. You know, no more Mr. Excitement. He's Mr. Michael no, Jacobs. No, 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 you, you got to throw that in there a little bit. It's, it's in between my name, Michael, okay. Mr. Excitement Jacobs. Okay. All right. We'll go with that. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. How you doing, Ursula? Legendary Miss Ursula Heron in the house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm no fine. I'm yes, yes. You know. I'm fine. You look fine. No, I'm not. I'm lying. Why are you lying? Because <laughs> I'm tired of sitting in the doggone house looking erect. But you don't look erect. You don't look erect, though. Not, not to me. Except you don't look erect. Let me, let me tell you why I don't. I called Maybelline, <laughs> L'Oreal, and... <laughs> <laughs> I had to get all of them together. You know what I mean? <laughs> but they, they didn't have to do no work. You must have called them up just to say hi. Because you, you don't need yeah, them. I, I sure did. <laughs> Look, they know what, when I call them, they know I need them. Uh-oh, uh-oh. They're on, they're on speed <laughs> dial. Like, like I got Gabardine, Herbaline, and Sibylline on dial speed dial. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> wow, but you know, it, 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 it's great to have you here because you know one of the things that I, I always like to know is you know you know people see you on TV, they've seen you um, um, throughout the years, you know, with, with First Choice, and and you know don't realize that we're normal and regular people, and we go through the same thing that everybody else goes through. Thus, the pandemic, and how we how are you dealing with it at this particular time? Okay. Um. As crazy as I used to be, I'm not that crazy Ursula I used to be. Because I'd probably be in the streets, running up down the street screaming. <laughs> but because I'm old now, okay. and I'm laid back, and I'm in the house all the time anyway, it really is not bothering. The only thing that's bothering me is when I want to go out, I have to say, oh, shoot. You know? Right, right. You know, I'm in a little, I'm in this little old rural city in Clinton, North, North Carolina. And there's not many people anyway, mm. you know, and, but to feel like I shouldn't go out or I can't go, you know, that's the only thing bothering me, but to be home doesn't bother me. Right Now, right. if I still lived in my hometown, Philly, look, I'd probably be going crazy because I'd be wanting to go to the club or something <laughs> by now. Me and Mike talked about or, stuff or, like that. Or go out. Or go out my front on on my um on, on the street in front of my house and jump some double dutch or something. <laughs> I used to do that. I used to do that with my cousin Wendy. You jumped double dutch, Mike? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. I wasn't great, but uh, I, I used Mike, to do a little you jumped bit. double dutch. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Next, you gonna tell bit. me you hula hoop too, right? No, 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 no. Okay, good. I ain't really mess with that. <laughs> I, I used to hula hoop. I, I can't. I can't. I hold roller hold. skate, ice skate. I ice skate then. I roller skate though. Well, you you touched on something, that Mike. I get Mike wanna. I guess he that leads right into Mike because Mike's a roller skater. For well, real, yeah, I, I did that for years. I did it as a profession. Um, I was a skateboard wow. at a roller rink in the Bronx, New York, called the Skate Key, the original Skate Key, and I worked there oh, from wow. 1984 through like 1991 and around there. So I did that for wow. Years. Yeah. Go ahead, Mike. That's why you're excited. <laughs> right, right. That's what Mike. is that where you got the excitement there? I know you had told us one time how you got the excitement there. How'd you get sports. that? Sports. sports. Sports? Okay. Skating, baseball, football, basketball. Yeah. All that stuff. A little bit of Wow. Well, well, growing up, when I was growing up, my dream, my whole life was ballet. Mm. I went to ballet. I went to ballet school starting at the age of four. And then when I became a teenager, I won a scholarship, four-year scholarship at the uh, Philadelphia School of Ballet. And I, my dream was to open my own ballet school. Wow. But I ended up making it and joining First Choice. But in the midst, in the midst of all of that, I didn't know I could sing. 
and I still don't think I can, but I evidently somebody did. Mm. And I um I I was in a lot as as y'all probably saw on Facebook. I posted a lot of groups I've sang mm. with. I've had so many groups before and after I joined First Choice, but my dream was always ballet. I wanted a ballet school so bad. How I found that I could sing was Poojia at the Delphonics. Um, I used to, coming home from uh, high school, I used to stand on the corner at 52nd and Spruce. Mm -hmm. And over top of that was Philly Groove Records, which was Stan Watson, which was first choice, and Delphonics manager. Mm -hmm. And that was his record label. So Poojia would, be at the window every time I came, but I didn't know who they were. And he would, he, so this one day he hung out the window, he said, hey, hey, and I looked up and I said, what? Cause I was real mean. I said, what? And he said, how you doing my little 52nd street queen? He said, do you ever smile? And I said, for what? So he said, come here. So I went over there to the door where you would go upstairs to Philly Groove Records. And he said, come here. So I went up there. Well, back then we didn't have to worry about people like we do now. Right. And I went up there and he said, um, my name is Poojie. What's yours? I said, Ursula. He said, um, do you know who I am? I said, no. He said, I'm Poojie of Delphonics. I said, and? <laughs> See, I'm laughing because you told me the story a few years ago. So I'm well equipped. Yeah. Of that. I was dying when Ursula told me that. But he what was his reaction when I you said, said so? No. I told him, no, I don't sing. So he said, um, so he started playing the piano and he said, let me hear you sing something. And I started singing whatever he, and I said, he said, you can sing. I said, can I? I said, well, I'm a ballet dancer. I was a ballet dancer and I was in the top 100 ballet dancers in the state of Pennsylvania. Mm. They had this big ballet troupe and the it, it, only ones in it were the top 100 dancers. Wow. And I had been asked to join that. So that's all I did. I said, I'm a ballet dancer. And that's what I want to do. He said, well, you need to consider singing. I said, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and so the, the, there was a group called Tapestry was looking for a female to sing with them. And Tapestry was um, the, lead, the lead singer Tapestry that was there named Jimmy Carmichael. He was the lead singer for Instant Funk. I got my mind made up. Right, Come right. On. Yeah. Get, get it, yeah he, just passed away this, he just passed away this year. Mm. Um, but he was in the group, and so I joined Tapestry. And when I graduated high school, First Choice was looking for somebody, and Stan Watson, their manager, knew me from singing, because he used to see me sing with Tapestry. Mm. And he told them, I got the girl for you. And he asked me would I join First Choice. Well, I was a funk girl. I was like the funk, you know what I mean? So, and then I had an offer from um, Funkadelics. They were putting together the Brides of Funkenstein. Mm. So at the same time, here I am trying to make a decision. Do I want to get in another funk band or go to first? I said, well, I've already did the funk. I'll try first choice. And right. that's when I chose first choice. And the rest is history. The rest is history. As they say. As, you know, yeah, as they I, say. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what was Poojie's face like when, when he said, you know, you could sing. You like, and? <laughs> he laughed at me. <laughs> I can imagine he that. Because because he, he for some reason knew I was kind of mean. Right, right. I didn't smile much at people that I didn't know. You know, the funny thing is, let me let me ask you now. Once once you heard him sing and start realizing who they were, what was your what was your thought process? I had none <laughs> because I was like, so what? I don't care. <laughs> I told you I was mean. Right, right. I right. didn't care who you were. and I was like and. Mm. Because that music, what I used to play piano. Right, right, right. Um, um, and then I got into theater in a late in my late years, in my thirties. Okay. And all I did, what happened was, I didn't have nothing to do this particular Sunday, and I saw on a commercial on my TV. I was still in Philly then, and said that they were holding mm. auditions for the road production of Ain't Misbehaving. Ooh, okay. Because Nell Carter and that production had right. left, and they were trying to redo it. So me, I went down, I said, I'm going down there, Ma. I'm just going, I ain't got nothing else to do. And I got, I got Nell Carter's part. Nice. That was the first time I ever did theater. I hated theater. 
Wow. And the reason why I hated theater because you got to remember too much. You <laughs> yeah, sure, no yeah. <laughs> it happens in real life, right? It, ha it happens there. You you can't mess up. There's no tape. You're like, okay, do it over. Exactly. Look, wow. you got to know when to come out, where to stand, and better be there. I said, y'all got to do too darn much. And when I got casted, I got casted with Carla Benson that was one of the sweeties that sang background for umpteen years with Patti LaBelle. Hmm. And it was her and I and another girl named Kristen and um, a guy named Andre and a guy named Bill. And we were, oh my God, it was awesome. And that's when I grew to love for theater. Nice, nice. How long was you with yeah. you? What, how, how long was your theater run? Um, just a, a year. Oh, okay. Yeah. First, tell, tell, tell a story about when, um, I guess you was in the role with The Temptations, the whole Melvin Franklin story about with your, your deep voice. Oh, oh. What happened? <laughs> First choice, we had went to see The Temptations at the mm -hmm. Latin Casino. And... Me, Rochelle, and Annette were behind stage waiting to meet them. And it was just us standing in the hallway because they had done did this show. They was cooling off, changing their clothes. But Melvin Franklin kept sticking his head out the door, looking up <laughs> and down the hallway. <laughs> so we like, you know, smiling, you know what I mean? We a little young, we little teenagers. And we grinning all hard. And he, he came out there about three times. And then he finally said, I hear somebody out here with a voice deep as mine. <laughs> he said, but all I see is y'all three little ladies. And he said, who's out here with a voice deep in mine? And I said, I am. <laughs> he said, oh my God. <laughs> I was so little, short, little wow. skinny old thing. Right, he right. said, come in here, come in here. So we finally got in the dressing room. He, he brought all the temptations out there in their little uh, sitting area. He said, I want you to hear this little lady's voice. And he said, say something. I said, what do you want me to say? <laughs> and they all was sitting there with their mouths open. So then, and, and what happened, what was funny, because it happened to be a time I was real hoarse. So my voice was like two times deep. Oh. So he started, he said, I want to see, can you go as low as I can? Ooh. So he started singing and I could hit every note he did. He said, I've never met a female that could sing my notes. I said, well, wow. you just did. Just did. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There she go with that that attitude again. Hey, well, you just did, Mister. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, because I'm a contralto, but I can see, I can sing. Um, be considered being able to sing a man's a male bass. Bell, okay, that's how deep my voice is. You know, I, I'm I thinking. Hate. You you know what's funny is like when when you was doing that whole thing with Melvin. I was wondering with the other Temptations was probably saying, Melvin, this is a setup. You set this up. There's no way in the world this could be like a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how it would have been. I'm like they Melvin. Could, you, you, you what? Uh huh. They couldn't believe it. They could not believe. Like I said, because I was so little, I was a little old, short little thing. And when I opened my mouth, everybody. When I opened my mouth, that's the first thing people would say. Damn. Oh, sorry. <laughs> listen to her voice. I would hear people say, "Come here. Listen to her voice. How deep it is." Well, I was teased when I was real young. Mm -hmm like in elementary school, people telling me that I wasn't a girl because I'm very hairy right. and I had such a deep voice. And they used to say, you're a boy, you ain't no girl. And I used to run home crying to my mother and telling her, mom, am I a girl, boy? Uh. So she took me to the doctor <laughs> and he ran all kinds of tests and, and told my mother, she's a girl. She just has <laughs> two very, two very over, Powering testosterone, male testosterone and hormones, and it affects wow. her voice and her hair. Right, right, right. Wow. Because if I let my hair grow, I uh -huh. would have a beard. So, wow. yeah, wow. That, you know, I'm, 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 I'm like you, you, you mentioned when you start talking about like Delphonse and Fuji, and then you talk about the Temptation. I'm like, these are, I mean, you, you, you talk about two iconic groups, and and it's like, you know, I'm, I'm looking back, I'm like, wow. But it was back in those days, the early days, when 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 you got a chance to to meet Fuji. How what 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 year? I'm, I don't even want to go in the year because then that you know. It was it was like um. It was like I was in ninth grade, so okay. it was in the six, either nineteen sixty eight or sixty nine. Okay, okay, okay. Because I, I, I graduated like, in nineteen seventy one. I was sixteen years old when I graduated high school. Right, right, okay. Yeah, because I, I I was like you know that was that around the time when. 
when they was like blossoming, it was like kind of like in the early stages. So it wasn't like, okay, these are the Delphi. Oh my God. And like you said, you wasn't going to do an oh my God anyway, because you were exactly. just as musically talented, but didn't really, you know, kind of understood your talent as much as everybody else yes. did. You know? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I like music, but I wasn't in the who. Like if I looked at somebody, I knew who they were. Right. Because I was, I may play your song and hear it at home or on the mm -hmm. radio, mm -hmm. in the car or something. But to know you when I saw you, I didn't know you. And I was one of the ones, who were you? I don't care. <laughs> I, I used to, um, I used to have a group called Two Guys and a Doll. And um, Harold Melvin is the one that named us and he right. was our manager. So we used to wow. travel and op be their opening act on tour. Nice. Yep. How did, how did I mean, you know, we, we, we gonna jump to like now the, the more, um, you know, updated times right now, and 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 you and Mike coming together, and how how did the the whole, you know, excitement worldwide concerts? What Mike was you worldwide concerts back then, or when you first started your concerts, you was just? Oh no, I was um total excitement. Okay, that was um, that was like back in two thousand five, and that lasted like about that lasted a few years. But I only did two concerts, and I gave it up. And you know, going to Michelle Lakata's concerts and Bob Gurich, right? I got that concert bug again. I mean, like you know, it wasn't like you know, we wasn't feeling all music, disco, right. jazz, hip hop, R and B, so a little bit of everything. But I got a chance to see First Choice. I think at, at one of Michelle's events. I think it was in two thousand eighteen. Yeah. Oh, okay. Eighteen. Yeah. In two thousand eighteen, and then and then I got in touch with Mike Bullock. Mike right. Bullock, who also you know manages um, Double Exposure, and I said I'm trying to do something, and I knew it was going to be sometime in two thousand. 18, I just didn't know when. Oh, you know, okay. So I was like, no, actually, no, I'm sorry. I saw First Choice in 2017. I saw him in 2017. And I got in touch with Mike Bullock, maybe a little bit after that. And right. that's where I was like, I'm interested, like, big time. He said, what? Well, you know, I managed double exposure, too. I said, just writing all this stuff down. <laughs> but but I, 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 going to Michelle's shows, like, just the energy at our shows is incredible. You know, like, yeah. super incredible. And I'm like, that's missing in the area where I live at in Bronx. Like these shows don't come to the Bronx. They're in Brooklyn, they're in, you know, Queens, you know, Long Island, Manhattan, Staten Island, you know, but uh, Manhattan also, but the Bronx, they wasn't coming to the Bronx. And I said, I'm going to try to, you know, do something and see if this thing works. And that first show was incredible. Even though the second, the Disco Explosion show was great that we did, that first Legends of Disco show was uh, fun. Yeah, that was, that was it, incredible. It was. I don't think you can get a video really lineup on stage in, in three hours than that show. That show was crazy. It really was. It really was. You know, whenever we did the South, when South Soul did their big reunion and First Choice came back together, that was the first time we all had come back together. And um, after that, Michelle Licata, she was the one that believed in us and right. gave us and said, I want y'all, you know. Right. Um, we love Rochelle, and she's got her own solo career. That's why. That's the only reason why she's not with us, right? Because right. she has her solo career, and that's what she wanted. And we, we wish her the best with right. it and everything. You know, we're still cool with her and everything. But Michelle gave us a chance after not having Mich uh, Rochelle, right? And right. she believed in us, and we we love we love Michelle because, uh, like I said, you know, sometimes whenever people, you know, because Rochelle did most of the leads on the right, song, right? Although Annette and her did a lot of joint leads on the Most songs leads. and, and um, shared ad libs and stuff, right. but whenever that person, that voice is not there, a lot of people do it. Well, I, that, that's not there, that, you know. But um, she gave us a chance, and she saw, shoot, y'all holding your own, wow. you know. And and a lot of people didn't even know that she wasn't there because I guess you know with Annette, Annette sounds so close to her, right, right. Way, you know, so you guys didn't miss a beat. Right. Right. She gave us a chance and we've been and she kept us rolling. Then it was her, then her and Mike kept us rolling. We loved it. Yeah. Right, right. We loved it. Well, you know, I mean, we I'm I'm having such a great time. And it's like, you know, we want to get much deeper into the whole, you know, uh first choice. Um, um the the intriguing, you know, first choice, like, you know, some of the funny things that went on, like when you guys in the studio, because you know, it's always and, 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 and I go back to when I had a conversation with um, Cedric the Entertainer, and you had spoke about, you know, like doing live stuff and doing theater. And I was asking Cedric that because when his next, um, see, uh, one of the seasons of, of um, um, uh, 
uh, I forgot the name of the show, but um, Soul Man. And, and I asked him about, you know, when you do live, he's like, you know, you got to have a person that when you do, um, like, I guess, taped performances, it's like you can mess up and do it over. I said, right. well, when you get those, you can have a clown during that, you know, somebody that acts cuckoo sometimes. But when you're doing a live show, you can't do that, you know. That's so right. what I want to do is like when when we do part two of this, because, you know, I want to, you know, get a chance to talk to you and Ursula, I mean, and, and uh, Annette and, and kind of talk about like the you know, kind of crazy times that you guys go through. Cause I know you have your stories. She's going to have her stories and I want to hear, oh, yeah. I want to hear all sides, you know, so. Boy, <laughs> boy, do we have some stories. Ah. First, let me ask you a question. You remember doing the TV show out in the Netherlands, right? Um, Top Pop, remember doing that show? Who did? Um, You. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, I mean, do you, do you remember actually traveling out there and doing the, doing the show? I know you sang lead on one of those songs that you performed on stage. I, um, you talking about I did lead? Yeah. No was... having you around. Right, right, right. Tell you the truth? No, I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. You know, sitting here looking at her face, she's like, you know, because there's some things, you know, you just, you know, with, with all the things that you do, I know it gets hard to remember everything. You know, it but is. yeah, I'm, 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 I'm curious. I'm like, I'm like so excited. Y'all done, you know, y'all done opened up my brain to like, you know, just want to hear everything. Now I'm like, now I want to hear the skinny on, on, um, first choice <laughs> now, you know, that's what I'm going to get. I'm going to get down into the nitty gritty, you know, <laughs> you know? so. Well, we'll uh, have to get that to you next week if we okay. could be able to do it. That's cool. You know, yeah. yeah. So, but, um, but, but, you know, this has been a, this has been a journey for me. Right. You know, uh, this career. I miss my ballet and my gymnastics, but right. and my piano playing. I don't even play piano no more. Wow, wow. And that and that does I don't. Right, you know I what? I got mad at my mom and I quit. So oh, <laughs> well, you know, hold on to those thoughts. We're gonna do some more of that next week because um, okay. you know I, I just I just want to you know I, I just I'm I'm loving this and I know we'll be able to talk all night, but then it's like when when Annette gets here, we won't have nothing to talk about because we're gonna be talking about everything. So I'm gonna give her a little something to talk about. She comes in. Oh, no, we're, right. we're, we're gonna so, get to the albums. We're gonna get yeah, to when Ursula, when yeah, Ursula we joined get to the first choice. Yeah, you know. So okay. With that being said, you know, I'm gonna um say this. This was great, Mike. You know, anything in closing you want to say? Oh uh, yeah, just stay safe, stay safe, and you know, I and let me say one thing in part. And, um, when first choice first came out, because you talk to DJs, legendary DJs, they always say you got you ladies were the first disco song or the first house song. So on the Extremely Dangerous, when that came out in 1973, they said you ushered in the disco era. Whether that's true or not, I just wanted to just get your feelings on that. And the house era at the same time. All right. That sounds like that sounds like a plan. Oh, I, the only reason why I say hold that thought to next week is because we're running out yeah. of time. Yeah, no, I'm looking at the time. And I'm telling you, you nothing. The net will know that. See, I can uh -huh. join the group till later. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note. But you know what? This has uh -huh. really been fun. Hey, and for me, know, too. You know we love you guys. Love you, we too. Love you too. We love, love you guys and too. I'm going to tell you something, Murph. Okay. If you're going to stop posting that food, I'm gaining weight looking at your food <laughs> online. Good night, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I always I say he's greedy. He's greedy. <laughs> or no comment.